I'm Leona Dooley, and this is Ebony, Ivy, and Time in the Kitchen. And I'm so glad that you're coming to be with me in the kitchen tonight. So, we're going to be cooking up something really good for dinner. We are going to have some jambalaya. And if you're interested, stay tuned. Tonight, we're cooking in my Crofton brazier that I found at Aldi's. You know, it's one of those three things that I talk about that every person needs to have in their kitchen. It doesn't have to necessarily be this brand, but you need a pot that is like this. It's low and it is heavy and uh, you can cook just about anything in here. So this brazier, I prepare everything in. So I am, I was testing to see just how warm it was and it's not warm enough. But we are going to um, start with um, our chicken. And I'm gonna take the chicken. I've got chicken that's already been cooked. Ha ha, that's gonna save us a little time. And what I'm gonna do in this chicken is that I'm gonna put it over here and I'm gonna kinda tilt you up just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to get about a tablespoon of Creole seasoning and this is Tom, uh, I call it crackers, but I don't think that's how they pronounce it. It's probably more checkers, uh, cr original Creole seasoning. Now it doesn't have to be this brand or Tony rather, but it can certainly be whatever kind of brand that you can find in your uh, store. Now, since that spoon won't go, I'm going to need something a little smaller. So I'm going to get a little skinnier spoon. That's one teaspoon. And I'm going to put in two teaspoons. And I think that'll be enough for now. And if I need more, you can always add more seasoning, but you can't take it away. So I'm going to lay my spoon right there. And I'm just going to stir this up because I want all that chicken to get good and seasoned. It needs to go back in the pot. I also have some Polish kielbasa. And I just, I just got the regular Polish kielbasa. I didn't worry about whether it was turkey or chicken. I uh, just got it and uh, picked it up. And I'm going to toss it in with the chicken because we want all of that to be nice and seasoned. So I'm going to add one more teaspoon. Now let's say about a half anyway, about a half a teaspoon. And this is hopefully going to be enough for the entire dish. Now in my skillet, I'm going to add in one hat of butter. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard butter called, named by the Pat, the Pats, the Pat family. There are, a Pat is a tablespoon, and that just means one knob or one slice of butter. So we're putting in one pat of butter. So I'm putting that in, but you know, butter burns very easily. So we're going to need to add a little oil. And this dish is all about the seasoning. Now, if you don't have this, then I'm going to make a suggestion. If you don't have, I keep a jar of my uh, bacon drippings so that I can use it when I'm cooking. Now, if you don't have any saved bacon grease, and or even you may not even eat bacon you could certainly use turkey bacon but you want something down in there or you could save little leavings from it if you fix some chicken but you want some kind of flavoring down in the bottom of this pan now so that's done so the next thing i'm going to do is that i'm going to add in our aromatics i'm going to start with onion and celery. I'm going to start those first. 
and I want them to cook well. You know, my second thing you absolutely must have is a wooden spoon. Because that wooden spoon is going to save you. And you know, this is my favorite. So, because I have, I use it for everything in every pot. It doesn't scratch up my pots. And uh, so, I just love having it around. So, there it is. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt. I'm not going to add a lot because just to shake across your vegetables. I'm also going to add in a pinch of black pepper. Just a pinch. Now, you know, I'm using right now black pepper powder, and it's pretty intense. So, that's a good pinch. And as I said, if we need more, then I can always add more. Woo! I can smell it. Okay. Now, so we've got that going. I'm going to add in some bell pepper, and then I'm going to put in some garlic. Okay, here's our bell pepper. And I want all of that to saute. Now I'm cooking this about an hour and a half before dinner. You could certainly put all of this, um, you could do it the night before, and while you're preparing one meal, have this on the other burner so you can put it all together. Have it in your refrigerator overnight, and when you come in from work, oh my goodness, it's going to be far better than what it's going to be tonight because all of those flavorings are going to have, have a chance to go through and just flavor up this dish. Now, I'm getting ready to put in some garlic, and this is about four to five cloves of garlic that has been minced. All right, so they're in. Now, I want my garlic in there. I don't want to burn it, so I cut the heat back just a tiny bit because I want all of this to cook. And I want everything to get nice and soft. I can kind of cut it back just a little too much. So I'm going to turn that up just a, just a smidge it. Okay, so I'm going to give that about five minutes. Five minutes. All right. In the center of this pot, I'm going to add in our meat. All the meat. That's the chicken, the sausage. I'm not going to add any shrimp until the last five to ten minutes. But we're going to put that meat in and let it get good and hot. It's going to need about ten minutes at least for all of this to come together. And once that happens, I'm going to make a big opening in the middle and I'm going to add in the rice because the rice is going to soak up all of that goodness as well. And mm, when we're finished, you're going to say, wow, 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 wow. This is good. So, five minutes. All right. Now, I'm going to pull back, and I'm going to add in a 28-ounce can of diced tomatoes. 28 ounce. It's got the juice, it's got the tomatoes. I'm going to add all that in. And I'm going to give it a nice stir. Now, you're going to start to see that in the center, you're going to have an accumulation of juices. Can you see that down in the middle? Now what I'm going to do down there is that I'm going to add in one cup of rice and I'm using brown rice. So I'm putting in a cup of brown rice 
I'm going to let that stay right there and let it start to soak up that goodness right there. Now I'm going to cover this for about 10 minutes and I'm going to give it a chance to all come together. When I take the top off, I'll bring you back. 10 minutes. Okay guys, here we are in 10 minutes. Now I'm going to take my wooden spoon and I'm going to run it across the bottom of this pan so that I can make sure that absolutely nothing is sticking. And you can see the rice, the meat, the tomatoes, they're all in there. Now I even have okra and I'm not a big okra fan, but my hubby loves okra and I'm going to be putting some okra in and I'm using frozen because at this time of the year, okra is not going to be good because let's face it, it's a summer vegetable. Now I'm letting this cook and uh, at this point, I'm going to sprinkle in some okra. Got the bag of frozen okra. That's going to be good. I'm going to put that in. Now, do you have to have okra? No. You can substitute for a green vegetable you like, but for true jambalaya, there must be Now, can anyone guess what I have not added to this pot? Voila, my pepperoncino. I'm going to sprinkle some in. And in fact, I'm going to put in about five dashes of hot sauce. Now, I'm using Frank's Red Hot. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. That's it. Now, if you have little ones that are going to be eating this and they're not quite used to spicy food, you can certainly uh, cut back on the spice. Now, I'm going to give this a really good stir. Ooh, smells so good. Oh. Now my rice obviously needs to still cook. It's not near ready. And I'm going to give it about 20 minutes to just simmer. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. And I'm going to give it a good 20 minutes to simmer. When, at the end of the 20 minutes, I'm going to lay the shrimp on top and cover it again. Okay? 20 minutes. All right, it's time to see what's going on in this pot. We're going to take the top off. Ooh -wee. Look at that. I'm going to give it a little stir here. Oh, I wish you could be here and smell it. The whole house smells wonderful. It smells like dinner. Mm. Now the rice still isn't quite ready. It needs time, but it is time to sprinkle in my shrimp. And I'm going to put that across the top. And I'm just going to kind of spread them out and kind of push them down into the liquid. My raw shrimp. If they need time to cook. And they're going to get happy down there in the in the broth from the jambalaya. I'm pushing them down in. Just taking my spoon and giving them a little shove. I don't want to break them up, but I do want them down in the liquid. Then I'm going to put the top back on this. And I'm not going to take the top off until it's time for dinner. And my rice is done. Now, depending upon where you have your fire, your temperature set, I'm speculating I'm not really going to eat for another at least 30 to 40 minutes. 
So I'm going to keep this on low and let it bubble because the longer it bubbles, the more time it gives the dish to come together. And so I'm going to put it on low. I'm going to put the top on it. And woohoo! This is going to continue to cook. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to serve it. Well, this baby has had about 30 to 40 minutes to simmer. And I'm going to take the top off. As you can see, I've had it down on low. My shrimp is ready. I'm going to, just going to turn it in. You can see the juice down in the bottom. Mm, mm, mm. It's going to be so good. I have about a pound of shrimp in here. Of course, if you have more people, you could certainly add more shrimp. Or if you want more shrimp, you know, that's up to you. But that works for, for us. And needless to say, my rice looks good. Let me taste a little bit. Let me get a spoon here so I can make sure it's ready. It should be. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to cut this up because I want it to be screaming hot when the big guy scoops this up into his bowl. Now I am going to taste for seasoning just to make sure that everything's good and salted. So there we go. Mmm. It's perfect. Doesn't need any salt. For me, it doesn't need any any heat. It's good. For the big buy, I already know. He's going to probably want a little more hot sauce. And that's his choice. He can do that. Or he could certainly add more of the Creole seasoning if he wanted to. But it is fine with me. So I am turning this up because I know he's going to want it boiling hot. That's how he likes it when he gets it. So I'm going to let that come up to a bubble and uh, dinner is ready so I am going to uh, get the bowls out and get ready to serve this up well you see it's nice and bubbly that is going to be so Good. It needs a good five minute boil to get it hot enough. And dinner is served. If you're a rice person or a shrimp person, if you like Louisiana cooking, this is your dish. Love it. I hope you have certainly enjoyed tonight and enjoyed staying with me while I prepared this dish. And blessings to you and your family as you cook and prepare dishes that will bring them great health and build your family community. So, have a wonderful evening and I'll see you tomorrow in the kitchen. Yummy. Dinner is served.